body praise the Lord tonight everyone who believes a great miracle a mighty miracle the expected miracle will come upon your life in Jesus name it's of that hand father in the mighty name of jesus we come to you tonight knowing you are the god of all grace the grace that supplies freely everything in our lives tonight do it in every life in jesus name everything we expect and things beyond our expectation grant unto everyone bless everyone let your joy let the happiness and let the health that comes from above come upon every life thank you lord it is done in jesus name we pray God has blessed you you can sit down you know that in this crusade we're talking about the grace of God don't forget that the grace of God what's grace by the way G R A C E God's riches at Christ's expense. That's why we're saying that He paid each all for my salvation, for my eternal life, for my healing, for my deliverance. Christ paid each all. And by grace now, we have God's redemption at Christ's expense because of grace now we can have god's righteousness at christ's expense that's why as you come nothing in my hands i bring simply to the cross i cling and grace will do it for you i hold that amen now when I pray how does God respond you need to understand he responds by grace somebody there could roll on the ground God doesn't answer prayer because of rolling on the ground somebody can shed tears cry cry and cry God doesn't answer prayer just before because I cry and somebody can burn this and burn that and give this and give that God doesn't respond just because I give this or that how does God respond he responds by grace grace and we'll have the grace tonight in Jesus name G R A C E God responds abundantly, completely, exceedingly. That's how he responds when you pray and you look to Calvary and you look to the Lord. He says, He's looking at Calvary, He's looking at Christ, He's demanding what He wants because of Christ. And God responds abundantly completely exceedingly that's why i'm sure you will answer your prayer tonight that's why i know because it's not by money it's not by marriage it's not by anything man can do but because of grace tonight i'm talking to you on the peculiar partakers of god's grace peculiar partakers of God's grace we're looking at Titus chapter 2 reading from verse 11 
for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Whenever we read the scriptures, we don't read our thoughts into the scripture. We don't read our ideas into the scripture. We don't read what they told us before into the scripture. We read the scripture directly, plainly. And it says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation. It's the grace of God that brings salvation as appeared to all men. He appears to you tonight. You will be a partaker tonight. Who am I talking to there? You got it. It's coming to you. Now, look at verse 12. In verse 12, it says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in Christ Jesus. At the pres in this present world, you understand? The grace comes to us in verse 11. And the very next verse, at the very next day, at the very next moment, that grace teaches us that now we have the power. Now we have the strength. Now we have the ability to deny all ungodliness, to deny worldly laws that now we should live not carelessly, soberly and righteously godly in this present world when is the grace of god coming to you this present world when is that grace going to turn your life around and change you for the better in this present world right now the peculiar partakers of God's grace. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Looking for, because the grace now has come. I can look forward to something. I can look forward to living with Christ up above forever and ever. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of. The great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Then in verse 14, he's talking about that Christ who gave himself for us. Who gave himself for us. Us means you and I. You and I. Are you there? He gave himself for you and I. And when I knew that he gave himself for me, and I know that grace is God's riches, God's redemption, God's righteousness at Christ's expense, I took, I got, I received that redemption. Now it, it's your turn. I've taken my own salvation, I've taken that. Deliverance, I've taken that. Healing are taking that, and yours is now waiting for you to take. You will have yours tonight. Salvation tonight. Healing tonight. Deliverance tonight. Freedom tonight. Can I tell you something? You will get exactly what I have got. The same healing I have. You'll have the same healing. The same deliverance I have, you'll have the same deliverance. Because he gave himself for us, for you and I. And I took my own. I will tell you how I took my own. Then you'll come, you'll take your own. I take my own. Because he gave himself for us. And then it says that. He might redeem us, you and I, from all iniquity. How many iniquities? And purify unto himself. A peculiar people, peculiar people, zealous of good works. Give me a good amen. 
I now recollect since I got that salvation. And I went to him and I said, you did that for me? He said, yes. You provided salvation for me? He said, yes. I said, give it to me. No wasting of time. He gave it to me. Now your turn. Yeah. And since that time, I have been zealous. Not me, the grace of God. As zealous as I am, you are going to be as zealous as that. In fact, since you are younger than I am, most of you, you will be more zealous than I am. I've been serving God now with zeal, with love, with passion, and you are going to have the same thing that I have got. Amen. Am, am I zealous? Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Am I zealous for good works? Now, you like to be like me? I say amen for you. Three things we're looking at. One, two, three. Number one, the privileged partakers of God's grace. The privileged partakers of of God's grace is the grace of God. It's the privilege of everyone. It's your privilege. It's my privilege. And you come. And he will not say no to you. You'll have it tonight. Number two, we're looking at the present products of God's grace. The present products of God's grace. Now, when we say products, it's like, you know, we're going to school. And then you came out, and you came out first, first class. I'm talking to somebody there. You're not being mediocre. You're not being a run-down believer. You're not being a so-so believer. You will be a, vi a vibrant believer. And, you know, when you go to school, you come out, and you're doing well. You take international exam. And you succeed. And then your school will say, he is our product. They will be proud of you. Amen. They will say, she is our product. They will be proud of you. Heaven is going to say, look at that Christian. That's the product of heaven. Amen. That's the product of grace. And that is what God does in our lives. He makes us the present products of God's grace. Look at number three. Number three is the peculiar people of God's grace. Peculiar people of God's grace. You know, sometimes people talk about us. I went to a particular place and it was a place where a high person, great person, I didn't even know he knew me. And so we got there. And the, as a brother there wanted to act like the MC, Master of Ceremony, and wanted to introduce. And he says, um, You know, Your Highness, Your Majesty, I want to introduce. And then he pointed to me. He says, Don't do that. I know him. I didn't know he knew me. Heaven will know you. God will say, I know him. When you pray, and then you're still saying, oh God, look at my challenge. I, I know you now. <laughs> you know me because you become today the peculiar person of God's grace. That's me. I say, that's me. Number three is the peculiar people of God's grace. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the privileged partakers of God's grace. I've read Titus chapter 2 verse 11. Let me read that again. Who are the privileged partakers? Who are the people that can come in? Are there people that are shielded from this grace of God? Look at this. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. How many people? When we say all, are you there? You are part of that tonight. 
you, God will not count you out. It's only if you say, no, I count myself out, you'll not count yourself out. You'll be a partaker tonight. If that, that's your privilege that he says the grace of God. It says the goodness of God. It says the redemption from God. It says the abundant, complete, exceeding manifestation of the goodness of God has now appeared unto all men. And it comes to you tonight. And as it comes to you, this will be your day of salvation because it says that grace of God appears to all men and it gives us, it bringeth salvation unto us. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, we're reading from verse 1. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, reading from verse 1, it says, We then, as workers together with him, that's what God beseech you also that ye receive not the grace of God in vain. You'll not receive the grace of God in vain. That's all the amen I hope I can give. The grace of God will do well in your life. Will bring virtue to your life will bring assurance to your life and you'll be happy I got it, I got it I got the grace of God remember, redemption God's redemption, remember at Christ's expense he paid it all, so now you can come and say Lord I come I thank you that Christ died for me I thank you that you reject no one and tonight I become the partaker of the grace of God. Look at verse 2. In verse 2, it says, for he says, I have heard thee in the accepted, in the, in the time accepted. The Lord said, he has heard your prayer. Yeah. You know, sometimes you are talking on the phone and you say, are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Maybe because of the line, he does not hear you. But there is uh, no problem with the line that goes straight to God. Is he hearing you tonight? Yeah. He's hearing your prayer. Yeah. He's hearing your request. He's hearing your demand. Because he said, I have heard thee in the time accepted. Then he says, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Write this date now. This is your day of salvation. God said so. And God cannot lie. This is my day of salvation. A day you'll never forget. Behold now is the accepted time. When is the accepted time? It's never sleep, it never slumbers, it's never tired, it's never weary. It said people yesterday, it said people last week, it said people all over the world last year or today. Does he take rest from saving people? No, he's still saving today. And you are the next one there. Salvation comes to you today. And then it says, now is the day of salvation. How does it come? How will it come? Look at verse 17. Verse 17 of that same Second Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. What does that mean? Let's say, for example, you've been in the village. And you have not gone to school. And somebody comes from the capital of the state. The government has said, go to that village and announce to them, you are all illiterate, you have not gone to school, you don't know how to write, and you don't know how to read now. The government has made provision, and you're all gathered there, all, all, all that have not gone to school. And it says, uh, now the government is going to give you free education. You're going to go to primary school, you go to secondary school, 
and you will go to university. Anybody accepting the offer? I said, anybody accepting the offer? Now, what do you do? All the people are there. And then he says, I need to write down your names. And I need to report back to the government at the capital that this is the number you have. And you want to go to school. You want to get a degree. You even want to become later a doctor, an engineer. And you want to become a professional person. And he says, so if you want this free education, come come out from the rest of the people who are illiterates and those who want to remain in their illiteracy make your choice make your decision come out what will you do tell me what answer do i give to the government what will i tell the government the government of heaven headed by god almighty it says go tell them salvation is now available free grace available everything they need to get to the place up on high is now available go tell them if they want that's why it says wherefore come out from among them from among the sinners among the drunkards from among the people who don't go and are not going anywhere and you are going where i am going and you are going where christ has gone to prepare a place for you and it says for that to happen come out anybody coming out anybody coming out you don't say, my friend, are you going to get this free offer from the government of our state? You don't ask anybody. You don't look here and there. Is he coming out? Is he coming out? You make up your mind. Anybody there? You make up your mind. I said, anybody there? I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Though my friends oppose me. Still, I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. The kingdom of God is calling me. And there may be people who are not ready yet. But I am ready to follow Christ. I'm talking about somebody there. Tonight is your night of salvation. Yeah. And the grace of God that appears to all men will appear to you tonight. But come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. I'm sure you understand. Now we're calling the Lord, the government of, uh, you know, capital. They're calling, come out, you want this education? And, um, you know, the, the, this uh, people that, you know, the government official is talking to, they don't know about paper. They don't know about toilet roll. And what they be using, they take, um, you know, leave, and then they, you know, try to clean off, and, you know, that thing doesn't clean up very well. And uh, then you are carrying those leaves with you. And the representative of the government said, what's that? That's what I use in clean up. Okay, don't touch that again. You are going to have something better. You, you are going to have something better your personal life, your private life, something better from heaven in Jesus' name. So all those other things, I touch that, I take that, I do this, I do that. The Lord is saying, come for a better life. Come for a better life. I said, come for a cleaner life. And touch not the unclean thing. And then he says, I 
will receive you. Government representative, what if you get back to the capital? And then the king and the governor looks at all the names and he say, I don't want this. I don't it. the representative said no. The governor will not do that. And I come to announce to you from the government of heaven that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He will not reject you. Just come, just come, just come. And understand that the grace of God that bringeth salvation has now appeared unto all men. Unto you. Unto me. Unto us together, you are happy tonight in Jesus' name. And I will receive you. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, and ye will and will be a father unto you. The creator will be your father. The perfect, impartial God will be your father. The savior of all mankind will be your father the healer who heals everyone he even heals the people out there he says you come in you'll be the first privileged partaker of the healing virtue of the lord and every problem you have christ will carry everything away for you for you Congratulations as you come. It says, I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters. You know, sometimes here in the world, the things that the government will provide for sons, for the male, and they'll not provide for the female. But this one, the kingdom of God, the government of heaven, provides for the son and for the daughter. Any daughters in the house today? Raise up your hand. Any daughters in the house today? Shout it aloud if you are there. Congratulations. Salvation has come for you. The grace of God has come for you. Sons, are you here? The males, are you here? Where are you? Praise the Lord. Salvation. Salvation comes upon you tonight in Jesus' name. Remember, the salvation you're having will not be different from the salvation Peter had, that John had, that James had, that Paul had. You look at those men. I wish I were here when they were here. Then I will have what they had. The Lord says today is the day of your salvation. The same kind of salvation that they had, you are going to have. And he says, this is said by the Lord Almighty. By the Lord Almighty. Say, Lord Almighty. What does that mean? That means God who said he will save you tonight is almighty. Satan may try to block the way. The almighty will knock him off your way. And all those who say, no, no, it's not good enough for salvation. It's too dirty, too sinful. It's too bad. The almighty will strike off will close the mouth of all those petty, petty, little people. And the Lord says, keep on coming. Salvation has come to you today. Yeah. Number one, the privileged partakers of God's grace. We're looking at number two. Number two, we're looking at the present products of God's grace. Immediately you come, the grace of God that brings salvation will appear to you, will be your own, and you will take it. You say, praise the Lord, he gave me, and I got it, and I took it. Now, immediately after that, God will make that grace to turn your life around for the better. It says in verse 12 of Titus chapter 2, 
teaching us. You come across this word again, us, us, you and I, everyone, everyone that comes, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws that ye or we should be, should live soberly, righteously, and godly when in this present world where you were before this present world you couldn't do right you couldn't talk right you couldn't walk right you couldn't think right in this present world as this salvation comes to you that salvation that grace will teach you will teach you <laughs> you know when i was uh, you know growing up as a young person my father taught me some good, good things. Go this way. Go that way. Yes, sir. But I didn't have the inner power, enablement. I didn't have the strength to do those things. And I went astray. But now, things are different now. Grace has come. Grace has come. You'll find things will become different in your life. Yeah. All those who have been saying, go this way. Yes, Pastor. But after we let each other, you tried, <laughs> you see. How does the pastor want me to go this way? All my friends are going the other way. How does the pastor want me to be different? No, it's not me. But grace has come to your life today. Yeah. And that grace will teach you that to deny ungodliness you know what that means ungodliness if you look at that word there is god inside there there's godly inside there there's godliness inside there and then that means like god but the un before each ungodliness turns our lives upside down well, to be like God is a creator, like father, like children, but no, because of that thing inside us, the inability to go right, so ungodliness came in. And now the grace of God comes to you. Am I talking about you? The grace of God comes to you, and ungodliness knocks at the door before. Before the grace of God came, you didn't know how to say no at any time. Who is there at the door? Ungodliness. <laughs> this thing has come again. What can I do now? You couldn't say no. Who is there at the door? Unrighteousness. <laughs> this thing has come again. What can I do now? You couldn't say no. All those bad, bad things in your life that came up, and when they came, they didn't come as guests, they stayed there. Ungodliness comes, stays there. Unrighteousness comes, stays there. Bad habit comes, stays there. And all those uh, things that turn our brain, that turn our lives, and turns our lives upside down, they know that the door, you didn't have the power to say no, they stayed there. And then they have been ruining our lives. But now, when grace comes, the power to say no will come to you. Yeah. And if the devil knocks at the door, what are you going to say? No. Say that no the way you say it, let me hear you. <laughs> and when you say that, it will almost deafen the ear of the devil. You've never said a kind of no like that before, but now grace has come. I said, grace has come. Yeah. And so, godliness knocks at the door. Who is there? Ungodliness? Tell me what you'll say. Yeah, yeah but it's, and then it says, worldly lusts. Worldly lusts. It's just saying, the lust after things that the worldly people, the people in the world that they lost after. Some people in the world, they lost after the blood of their neighbors. And they are after them, after them. They want to take their blood. 
Some people in the world, the loss they have is to take the organs of their body. Even if they kill the person to have to harvest the organs of their body, that's their desire. They want to go and make money out of that. The lost of the world, you know, sometimes it is, you know, to belong, to belong. Uh, he is drinking, she is drinking, and all this community they are drinking, and you are the odd fellow out. If you are not drinking, so you are sucked in to that system. That there is the lost of the world. The night clubs. You know, you must go here, you must go there. What do you go to do there? I go to relax. No, you don't relax. You spend your money, you spend your energy, you spend the youthful life and strength you have. You waste your life there. But you couldn't say no. But now, all the lost of the world will come and your friends will say, hi, come on, we're going tonight. You say, where? To that same place where I've been going, oh, something happened to me. What happened to you? Salvation came to my heart. The grace of God came to my life. God's riches at Christ's expense. That's what I have now. God's redemption at Christ's expense. That's what I have now. God's righteousness at Christ's expense. I say no. Say no with me. And now it says that we should live soberly. Soberly. We used to live frivolously, carelessly. We used to live in a dissipating way. They take our energy. They take our mind. They take our brain. Well, we're not sober. But now that grace says you can't be as frivolous as you were in the past. You cannot be as foolish as you were before. Now you live soberly. How do I live soberly? Grace, please teach me. Well, when you talk about all those dirty, dirty things in a saloon, and everybody there, those who are waiting for their turn, and those who are already, you know, doing their air, they laugh their heads off. You don't enjoy bad stories anymore, will you? You don't enjoy bad stories and dirty jokes anymore, will you? No, because now. You live so badly. And then you remember me as your, you know, your senior brother, or as your daddy, as your, you know, as your father in the Lord. You say, will daddy enjoy that kind of dirty joke? Tell me. No. Will he laugh with them as they're living that foolish life and they're living the uh, frivolous life? Will daddy in the Lord do that? And I got the same salvation that he got. And so, I'll be sober. Tell me now. And then you say to live righteously and godly. Righteously and godly. Life is going to be different. Your life is going to be different. The grace of God comes in. And that grace of God teaches you. That now you deny what they lost. You live soberly. You live righteously. You live godly. When? Tell me. Tell me. In this present world. Let me tell you something. Many of the things we do actually brought sickness into our lives. Many people do not know. But uh, the scientists are even telling us now there are sicknesses that come because of our lifestyle. We have cardiac problem, heart problem, it's our lifestyle. We have sugar, blood, or blood sugar, diabetes, it's our lifestyle. We have hypertension. It's our lifestyle. And we have, you know, blood clotting and this and that. It's our blood. It's our, our lifestyle. And what we eat 
eats us up you didn't know that before what you drink drinks you up and the scientists are now telling us and the doctors too they're telling us this will kill you this will kill you you know when i started preaching I, I used to you know emphasize that if you're a christian if you're a believer you must not smoke and you know some people accepted but later the scientists now brought it out and then they passed it on to the government and all the research they have done they investigated and they said they now said smoking cuts short your life can cut more than 10 years even 20 years out of your life not only that even before you die there is the what we call the health span your health span different from lifespan becomes shorter and at the tail end of your life for the for the rest of five years ten years you might be suffering from cancer, from this, from that. It's the way we live. It's all those things that the devil brought into the world. When Adam and Eve were created, and God created them, that they will be like him, there was no sickness. But when sin came, sickness came. Because sin was the cord that drew the sicknesses into our lives but now we're cutting that cord yeah. once you give your life to the lord the very first thing is that your soul now belongs to the lord your heart belongs to the lord your body too will belong to the lord he said ye are the temple of god will you see your temple crack and leave it like that lizards coming in lizards going out free will you see the roof of your house broken and the rains are coming in and the place is flooded no the same thing god now makes your body his temple he makes your body what ye are the temple of god broken bones will be mended disease skin will be mended brain problem will be mended you know, if you, if you are you are still having the brain problem, you are having cancer, you are dying of a blood flow, and energy is being drained out of you, and then God says, "That is my product." No, He can't say that. He won't say that's my product. A man is dying of cancer. Is dying of tuberculosis. The man is dying. The woman is dying of all these uh, uh, the demon, demon uh, possessed uh, situation. No, he will take it up. Tonight, grace comes to you. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Before I say what I want to say. Who am I talking to there? Oh, you are there. God has seen you there. It will cleanse your heart. It will heal your body. All the things that want to break up your system, the Lord will take everything away. At least that's what He has done for me. Look at me at my age. If you stand, I can stand even longer than you do. If I sit down, I can get up. And if I go this way go that way i'm not tired i pass that on to you the same salvation i have that same salvation you will have and the same healing the same health i have let me see your face i said let me see your face you have in jesus name deliverance deliverance will come to you there's something higher than deliverance that's dominion tonight you have that dominion i have i have everything that jesus paid for on the cross of calvary freedom you're free any rope 
any yoke that ties you down and you cannot do what you ought to do that rope that yoke is broken tonight broken 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 you are delivered in jesus name and look at this acts chapter 11 verse 23 acts chapter 11 when you came at verse 23 who when he came and had seen the grace of god watch when i was came to antioch and he came and he saw the people and it says he saw the grace of god <laughs> Tell me, Barnabas, how do you see grace? Just like you see air. As we are here now, we cannot see the air. But we see the air by the action of the air. When the wind is blowing, we cannot see the wind. But we see the wind by the action of the wind. And the trees wave here and there. We say that the wind there. The wind is blowing. As you feel the freshness and the coolness in your body, you say, praise the Lord, I came out of the open because the wind is blowing by its action. When you have the grace of God, that grace will be seen. That's why when he came, he saw the grace of God what did he see g there he saw gentleness they were gentle they were tender with each other and he said no doubt grace is in this place because when grace comes it takes away the violence it takes away the aggressiveness that people have pushing down and treading upon people he sees the gentleness. See, when the grace of God comes to you, you'll not have to say much and tell me much. I can see age. And I can see that gentleness. It's all the rest. The rest. And the restfulness in their lives. He looked at that community of believers and all the restlessness that makes people not to stay at home and not to enjoy fellowship and they are here and there and they do various things. He got there, he saw the gentleness and he, he saw the restfulness among them. When you have the grace of God, we'll see the grace, we'll see the gentleness in your life, we'll see the restfulness in your life. He saw their attitude, their attitude, their attitude to each other, a loving attitude, a helpful attitude, a dependable trustworthy attitude that's what he saw and he saw their attitude to problems would you say there's nothing to worry about god is on the throne this one has happened that one has happened their attitude to problems they said i'll take you to god and i tell you i'll give you my testimony tomorrow he saw their attitude that's, that's it, you see, when the grace of God is in our lives, we don't have to shout too much and say, you know, I have the grace of God. I can tell. I can tell by your gentleness. I can tell by your restfulness. I can tell by your attitude. I can tell by your comportment, the way you comport yourself. And the way you hold yourself and your character, your charisma, I can see that. We may not see the air, but we're breathing in and out, and we're not suffocated. So I know about the air. You may not see the grace, but you see the comportment and the character and the lifestyle, and you say, Praise the Lord, there is grace here. And when you see a person and you see there's enablement, if he tells you, I'm going to do this. You see him another week, another month, it's done. Enable me to your life. While the other people that do not have grace, they're still struggling here and there. The grace of God that came to his life makes her to see something 
something good will see in your life. The gentleness will see in your life. The restfulness will see in your life. The attitude, no panic, no worry, no anxiety. Attitude of joy, attitude of peace will see that your life, your comportment. When other people are pushing this and pulling that, your comportment will show you have the grace of God. I have the grace of God. An enablement in your life. That God, what God has done, the power He gives you, the strength He gives you, the stability He gives you, it will happen today. Yeah. And when I see you tomorrow, I'm seeing some people here tomorrow, the young people, the teenagers, the coppers, university students, and those who are out of school. Whether you are, you know, doing trades, work, or whatever, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. If you are there, and I'm going to see you tomorrow, where are you? Shout it aloud! Yeah. And when you come tomorrow, I will see the grace of God in your life. Yeah. And then, we'll add to it. Somebody shout addition. Shout multiplication. multiplication. Your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. And the grace of God will be upon your life. Yeah. Daddy at home will see the grace of God in you. Yeah. Mommy at home will see the grace of God in you. Your friends, your friends, your friends, they'll see the grace of God in you. Yeah. Even your enemies, if there's any enemy, you will see the grace of God in you. You are in for new life. Something that never happened before is happening tonight. Healing that never happened before is happening tonight. Power manifestation that never happened before is happening tonight. Number three now. Number three, the peculiar people of God's grace. That word peculiar means the distinguished people. The different people. The people of a higher height. Higher calling. Higher habitual. Higher things in their lives in Jesus name peculiar what's the opposite of peculiar common refrag like any other person oh don't, don't talk to him to do any better it's of the common people you're coming out of those common people in Jesus name oh you expect something from him how can you do that? Don't you know him? He's always been down. He remains down. He's a person that even the flood is going to wash away. Come on, people. You are going to distinguish yourself tonight by having the grace of God in your life. I'm telling you, you are going to become peculiar. Not just because I said so, because the grace of God that comes upon your life will see you as peculiar. Yeah. Number one, God in heaven will label you as peculiar. Yeah. The angels of God will see you as peculiar. Yeah. The children of Israel in Goshen, there was blackness and darkness everywhere. But it was light in their place because they were peculiar. When there's darkness all over, the light will shine from your light because you are peculiar. The angels of God will see you as peculiar. Your people, your people all around you will see you as peculiar. Amen. 
when I receive this grace of salvation, I didn't make, you know, a force. I, I used to make resolution. I will do this. I will do that. I didn't, I didn't have to do that anymore. The grace of God that brought salvation turned everything around for the better. And my fellow students, that time where I was calling, saw me as different, distinct, and peculiar. And then I went home, and the people at home, they saw me different, distinct, and peculiar. The things I used to do, I did them no more. The places I used to go, I went there no more. The things I used to put in my mouth. I didn't put those things anymore because grace has now come to make me peculiar. You. You. Even Satan will know I can't touch that one. He'll put his finger in the mouth. This man is gone. This woman is gone. This boy is gone. I cannot use him anymore. And nobody will use your blood. Because now you are peculiar. Look at Titus chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 14. Titus chapter 2 verse 14. Who gave himself for us. You see all the time for us. For us. For you and for me. For me and for you. He gave himself for who? For who? For you. That he might redeem us. You and I. I and you. That he might redeem us from all iniquity. Amen. Yeah. And purify unto himself a peculiar people. Purify unto himself a peculiar people. You see, let's go. I said, where? I'd like to know where I'm going before I stand up. Let's go. Tell me where. You see, they're going to that place. They're going to do this and do that. Oh, I say, I, I can't do that anymore. Why? I'm peculiar. I'm different. I'm distinct. That's what comes to your life today. They say, let's say this. Let's wrap the lies together and let's tell the man of authority and decision. I say, but you say it's lie, yes. You are wrapping everything together, yes. I cannot do that. Why? Because I'm peculiar. A peculiar child of God. A peculiar son, daughter of God. That's who you are tonight. Zealous of good works. I, I, I didn't understand. The day I got salvation that the grace of God came to me the first person I met he saw a smile on my face and I, I wanted to tell him something you know when you get married you want to tell somebody when you got a certificate you want to tell somebody when you got a new job you want to tell somebody when I got grace salvation my name is the book of life i just wanted to tell somebody until now that's what i still do i still want to tell somebody good works good or good works now i'm zealous of good works you are the next person yeah. who will be the next who will be the next Salvation in your heart. Yeah. Healing in your body. Yeah. Deliverance in your soul. Yeah. And your name now in the book of life in heaven. Yeah. And your life will turn around for the better. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This now is the moment of decision. Have you decided? It's bowed and eyes closed. The grace of God now has appeared unto all men. And it is for you to say, I am a candidate of that grace and of that salvation. It's for everyone. 
Jesus gave himself for us, for you and I. Anyone, everyone is now available. And you see all that it will do in your life, touch your heart, repair your body, heal your body, deliver you, and give you dominion. Nothing of this world will have dominion over you anymore in Jesus' name. And you want to have this grace on this day of your salvation, wherever you are, you raise up your hand. Amen. God bless you there. Amen. God bless you there. Raise up that hand. The Lord is waiting for you. This is your day. This is the present moment that the grace of God, the salvation of God, the forgiveness of God will come into your life. You come out from among them and you become a real son a real daughter of God. Raise up your hand there. The Lord is looking for you. He knows where you are. He's watching now that you're raising up your hand and you're making up your mind that you come out from among them and you come into the fold. You come into the grace of God that brings salvation. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. God bless you. God bless you there. If you're raising up your hand, please stand up. Please stand up. God bless you. Wonderful, wonderful. The wonder of God that starts in your life tonight will never stop, will never end in Jesus' name. Those who are online, you are watching over television and you are listening over the radio, you raise up your hand to you because this is the moment I'm praying for everyone for the grace to come and for the salvation to come. You raise up your hand and you stand up and those in their homes and those in uh, uh, churches all over the world anywhere you are join us now raise up your hand there come out from among them and the lord says i will receive you i will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughter says the lord while you're standing tell the lord say lord I've decided to follow Jesus, no turning back, no turning back. Tell him, I live on my past life. I come to the new life. I come to receive the abundant grace of God. No turning back, no turning back. I come for everything you did and provided. On the cross of Calvary. We read it for us. For him, for her. For you, for me. Lord, I come to receive. No turning back. No turning back. Tell the Lord. Raise up that hand. I'm praying with you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for all your sons and your daughters. All those who have come out of their past life and they now come to Christ. They come to Him as Savior. Lord, according to your promise, let the salvation get to everyone right now in Jesus' name. By your mercy, by your love, by your compassion, by your grace, forgive all the sins of the past. Everyone. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Bring salvation to them. Let the joy of salvation, the victory of salvation be for everyone now in Jesus' name. Yeah. New life. Eternal life. Joyful life. Victorious life. Righteous life. Grant unto everyone. We receive. My friend, you receive. Son, you receive. Daughter, you receive. You are saved in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another amen. 
a good, unforgettable, a holder. Amen. Keep on standing. Our overseer is coming now to give us instruction and our counselors. Please, please, very quickly go there to them. We have quite, uh, you know, a crowd. So let's do this in time. And then, now that we become the temple of God, I'm coming back. This temple of yours, your body, will be repaired tonight. Restored tonight. Healed tonight. Everything broken in your life will be mended tonight. Pastor, please go ahead. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Please keep on standing. Our choir members, all our workers, please attend to the people. Please try and get to the back as well and to the left hand side as well, please. Don't mind the ground. Just reach out to everybody. Please don't sit down yet. Keep on standing until you are attended to. We want to tell you that the Lord is happy for what you have done tonight. That's the greatest decision you will ever make in life. And it is the decision that will matter in eternity. And so, our counselors are by your side. They are there to get your details, your name and other particulars, so that we'll be able to help you to retain the faith you have in Christ tonight. So feel free to give them all that they request from you. You are now a child of God. You cannot tell lies anymore. So tell them everything about yourself, the request from you. And if you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there is a link there on your set or the system with which you receive the message tonight. Or if you cannot be able to click it, just copy and paste it, and it will take you to where you can fill in your details. And it is gckhq.org forward slash connect. Also, if you are listening, via radio or television and you have just given your life to Christ, send your name, your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four 915-444-9263. Again, plus 234-915-444-9263. Six three. Send 
your particulars to that number. There will be a special meeting, lunch hour with Jesus, tomorrow by 3 p.m. For all those who gave their lives to Christ tonight and those who did yesterday, as you will come here tomorrow by 3 p.m., please, you will go to the right-hand side behind this tent. You are going to see where we will meet with you. It's a package for you, and we shall be given to you tomorrow. So don't forget to attend by 3 p.m. on the dot. There will also be a special believers banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ during this crusade. On Sunday, the 6th of October, 2024, in all our churches globally, more details about this will be sent to you. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. But for those in Alpha location here, the Believers Banquet will be on Sunday, 6th of October at the Deeper Life Bible Church venue that the counselors will be telling you. And it will be by 3 p.m. So our counselors... Please get to everybody. Let everybody have the opportunity to give us their names, their particulars. And if you have not been attended to, please, can you raise your hand and wave it so that our counselors can get to you? So please, the counselors, let's do a thorough job tonight. Get to all the places, including the streets, adjoining the venue here. So go there, you see a lot of people. Those of us who are sitting down, don't forget to be praying, calling upon the Lord, that tonight, the pastor has already told us, you will receive a miracle you have never got in your whole life. And so, tell the Lord and say, Lord, tonight, the prophecy of the servant of the Lord will be fulfilled on me. Talk to the Lord. Our counselors, please, let's be faster. Let's get to everybody. There is joy in heaven tonight for every one of us who has given his or her life to Christ. Don't forget, please, if you have not been attended to, don't sit down yet until our counselors come by your side. Let's be faster. Let's be faster. Please, we want our choir members, please, those who are sitting down, could you please rise to lend a helping hand, please. God bless you. God bless you. Just join our counselors who are attending to the converse. Don't forget, that's the main reason we are here. Please, God bless you. Please join our counselors. Just get to the back. Attend to everybody.
if you have not been attended to, please just wave your hand. Let them see you are there. Once again, we want to remind our online audience that if you gave your life to Christ tonight, after the message of a pastor, there is a link on the system you use to receive the message. You can click it and then fill out the form that we can use to assist you further in your new work with Christ. If you cannot click on that link, just copy it and paste. Or you will type it on your on the browse bar and it is gckhq.org forward slash connect. With that, it will take you to the form. You fill it and turn it in. Also, if you are listening through the radio or television and you have just given your light to Christ, you will send your name, your phone number, your location address through SMS or WhatsApp to this number, we shall call now, plus 234-915-4492-63. Please, may I know if we are through now the left-hand side of the crowd? That is your own right-hand side, but my own left-hand side. So if you are through there, please, can you raise your banner or your balloon and wave it at me? Okay, the far left, please, the far left, can I get signal from there? The far left. That's your far right. Can you signal to let us know if you are true? Just raise your banner or your balloon and wave it at me. At the central area, can you, just central now, can you please wave at me? If you are true, just wave your banner or your balloon. Please, can you do that? Okay. God bless you. At the right-hand side of the crowd, please, if you are true with your with the assignment can you please raise your banner or your balloon at the at the right hand side and wave it at me okay thank you very much now i want to get a signal from the far left please if you have Gone through, can you please raise your balloon or your banner and wave it at me, please? At the far left. Shall we be faster?
Can you raise up your banner now if you are true at the far left? Just wave it at me. In the front, at the far left, please. Wave it at me. Wave it at me if you are true. Okay. Shall we all rise up on our feet? As the pastor comes, expect that wonderful thing that has never happened to you before. Amen. Yeah. That amen is good. But heaven needs a better amen. Somebody help me shout miracle. miracle. Shout healing. healing. Shout deliverance. deliverance. Shout dominion. dominion. You know, when the rain was falling earlier in the day, every part. It fell here, fell here, fell there, fell everywhere. And the rain came on everybody except those who were hiding themselves under shelter. Miracle is going to fall like rain. Yeah. Healing is going to fall like rain. Yeah. It's coming from heaven. Yeah. And this is the grace of God that brings everything that Calvary has provided for everyone. Yeah. Brother, there for you. Yeah. Sister, there for you. Yeah. Young people, there for you. Yeah. You raise up your hand. You lay the other hand on yourself. There's no discrimination. There's no partiality. Healing will come to you. And as we pray in the name of Jesus, when we hear that final amen, your problems are finished. Yeah. We're ready now. Heaven is ready now. Yeah. Who will be the next to testify? Yeah. Father, we love you and we thank you. Great God, loving God, gracious God. And we know you are going to heal all your people in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, in your love, in your compassion, put testimony in every mouth. Now the rain of healing will begin to fall. Let it fall on everyone. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. Let the miracle power of the Lord come upon you right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that brain problem be healed in Jesus' name. Madness, insanity, demon possession, you are cancelled in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have blind eyes. You are the creator and you have spare eyes for everyone. I pray that blindness will vanish away. And I command the bandage, invisible bandage of the devil that blindfolds you. Come out in Jesus' name. Glaucoma, get up from there. Cataract, get up from there. Dimness of sight. Get out in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, I command the deafness, I command the dumbness, be healed in Jesus' name. Those deaf ears begin to hear right now. Dumb tongues speak out right now. I pray for those who have swelling on their body. Swelling in the legs, swelling in the private parts, swelling in the armpit, anywhere, even at the back, swelling. 
I command you. Come out in Jesus' name. Also has no place in the temple of the living God. And ye are the temples of the living God. Also be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer comes to make long life short. Cancer comes to cause premature death. I command that spirit of death come out in Jesus' name. Cancer, that fellow you occupy in the body already has long life. You will not cut short the long life. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. That swelling of cancer, that sore of the cancer, you are healed, dry up now in Jesus' name. Noise in your head. Demon, shut up. Demon, harassing the brain, shut up. Come out in Jesus' name. Pile, you are healed in Jesus' name. Uh, diabetes, be healed in Jesus' name. High blood pressure, be healed in Jesus' name. Weak body, weak joint, weak knees, weak life. Let strength come now on everyone in Jesus' name. Whatever they call sickness, whatever they call disease, I send them packing out of your life. Be healed. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. And now you have dominion over everything that had that dominion over your life before. You're healed. I am healed. You're delivered. I am delivered. Receive your miracle right now. Receive your healing right now. And what you could not do before, as we say the final amen now, you will be able to do. Lord, confirm it in everyone. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. I got it. I got it. I got it. Don't just watch others. Check up yourself. Look at yourself there. See where that thing was. Look at it. It's gone. And now you can't stand. Now you can stand. You couldn't walk. Now you can walk. You couldn't see. Now you can see. You couldn't hear. Now you can hear. Check up yourself. There's testimony in your mouth. Yeah,